The Jefferson County Civic Center project is moving forward. Finally, Ken. Finally, yes. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. So I'm Susan Kessel and Ken Norton. Ken is vice president and I'm president of the Civic Center Board. Um, you've been in charge of the demolition since this started maybe a year ago? Uh, yeah, about this time a year ago. Yeah, I guess is when we really first started looking at the you know, what we were going to salvage and everything out of the houses. In fact, uh, we came in and taped everything inside the houses. Yes, we did. <laughs> so, so we are on site, which is almost the full block west of the Jefferson County Courthouse. Um, we have how many buildings on the site? There's uh, five buildings right now. Uh, you can see in the background the first one that's coming down. And today is January 31st, First. 2005. And there are these buildings. A transfer of property from the city of Fairfield has just been made recently to the Jefferson County Civic Center. And we have worked on getting, we put bids out for the um, demo crew, and I'll let you explain that. Yes, the bidding process, we sent out 14 bids, and there were uh, responses of seven or eight that came back. And as you see in the background, Miller Excavating from Fort Madison was the low bidder at uh, 30, I believe it was 34,000. Our uh, next uh, lowest bidder, uh, and as you remember, we had always talked about trying to keep everything yes. local. Our next lowest bidder was, uh, I think, 62000 And then the range, I believe, was clear up to a hundred and... 175000 That was out of Mount Pleasant. For all to do the same thing for the demolition. So there was a very wide range um, from the people that submitted bids. So with that, we felt like we had to go with the lowest bid. Well, obviously, after the information that we got, uh, on the raise of the steel, right? Oh. Yes, yes. So, had to save some money here. So, demolition has started. How long will this take? Well, they're saying that uh, he'll have them down in about five days. And as you can see, this, uh, this is a fourplex that's sitting behind us. And he's been working on it just about an hour and ten minutes. Oh, it's going fast. So they want to do this house and the little house next to it today. Yes, uh, correct. And there's two garages they're going to try to get out of here today. And then if the, if the weather would stay cold, although most of us don't want it to stay cold, uh, they could come in and start hauling all the debris out. But as the weather warms up, it stops us from getting trucks in here and also stops us from getting trucks to the landfill. Yes. And I should mention that um, I know we all have memories of things that have happened in this area of town. If you've lived here a while, the hotel is located here, and maybe we'll do a story about that with Mark Schaefer in the future. But the little house behind us that's had the removal of the outside, my dad told me the other day that he, um, his grandmother lived there, and he used to ride his horse into town and stay there in the winter and, and use coal for the heat. and. So it touches all of us. Days gone by. Yes, progress, all the time progress. And this will be a wonderful thing for Fairfield's future, the Civic Center, um, in revitalization of our downtown, and we're excited. Yeah. It's it was really a nice project, and as you well know, it's been, what, eight or nine years, I guess, when we first started this project. And it's uh, I still remember sitting in meetings and having to dig in our pockets to put money on the table so we could buy stamps to get it you're started. You're right, you're right. And the community has been very supportive and we're still looking for a little more support uh, because of cost increases and some redesign issues, but it's going to happen and it's going to be good for Fairfield. It sure will. Um, hopefully it's going to do everything that it's supposed to do. Bring Obviously the revitalization for downtown will hopefully will encourage the merchants to to get on board and start doing some things, some projects on their own. Plus, we hope to bring more people to town. Uh, we'll, hopefully, we'll provide jobs for people. Uh, it's kind of an ongoing economic development growth for everybody in the community. Yes. Um, back to the demolition. Um, before the demolition, like we said, we toured and went inside of all the houses and buildings and tried to identify things that could be salvaged. What are some of the things that were 
salvaged, asked for, unusual things asked for. <laughs> oh, everything from the, uh, the corbels from the, the mm -hmm. top of the house over here to uh, claw feet bathtubs to uh, furnaces and air conditioners. Uh, uh, we've salvaged just about everything we can Copper take. Copper wiring. Oh, they're stripping wiring out of the houses as we speak, uh, hand railings. Uh, uh, oak trim, uh, solid signs. oak doors, uh, signs. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. There's a long list of things that came out of here. And we've really been fortunate to have nice people to come in and help us get stuff out of here. And, and you know, it, rather than just throw it away, we could yeah. put a few dollars towards the Civic Center, so it helps. Yes. And also, something that did slow us down was um, testing that needed to be done. And we debated on a, as a board, you know, how do we go about this? Uh, we ended up doing exactly what we're supposed to do. Absolutely. Um, we did do the testing, uh, and obviously the testing was for asbestos. And there was uh, one home, I think it was the one that you just referred to, that had asbestos siding on it. And they used to do that years ago. And as long as that's compressed, it's okay. But once you start grinding it and it floats in the air, that's when the danger comes. But rather than take a chance, we hired James Bettinger. Uh, he is licensed and certified with the DNR, and he came in and removed all the siding. In fact, he's doing just a little bit of cleanup right now. Uh, reason being is that DNR came in, and uh, on a, a second inspection, they did find some in the window caulking, and so we had to shut everything down again and, and wait some more, and they're taking the, the caulking out of the windows today, and then we're ready to finish the demo. Hopefully by uh, this time next week we should have everything down. Wow, exciting. So we've tried to do everything right and that that means all the permits and, and certificates and everything that goes along with demolition that I didn't know about, <laughs> didn't really want to know about, but Ken, thank you so much for working and being in charge of this. Oh, it was a real pleasure. Uh, a one pleasure? of the things, oh, of course, <laughs> working with you, not the demo. It's been a nightmare. Uh, one thing, too, that I think the community probably should be aware of, and excuse my phone for ringing in the background, um, uh, Alliant Energy is also involved in the project, and they've been here and, and capped off gas, but we did get uh, a surprise, I guess, here the other day when they are going to charge us eighty eighty three thousand dollars roughly to uh, move the lines about a block so just something else that you know it's one of those things that every time you turn a corner it's like building a house when you build the basement and put another corner in it adds more more to the cost so that's one of those things that happens to this too and uh, but we'll be watching that very carefully all the way through the process and they're going to work with us too to make sure you know if there's any way that we can save some of that money we're not going to try to spend all of it but that's the estimated cost on it right now okay also, I know there's a lot of concern about parking, and I guess I would have to say if I were a business owner close by, I would be concerned about parking also. But I want everyone to know that we're going to do everything possible to, and the city too. I know Ed Malloy is very supportive of the project and the council and doing whatever we can to keep up with the parking issues in our community. Um, you were saying that this lot was supposed to be fully blocked off. Originally the plans call for it to be uh, totally blocked, but rather than to do that from the very get-go, we decided that we would only do half of it for right now, but eventually we're going to have to go ahead and, and take all of it because uh, what you alluded to a little bit ago was the uh, fact that the Turner Hotel used to sit right here, and if anybody can still remember that, that when that burned, my best guess is that all of the brick from that is piled in the old basement. So once we remove the parking lot, we're going to have to dig all that stuff out. And as you and I were talking a little bit ago, we'll see if we can salvage some of the parking lot that we're standing on right here and maybe just tear that down. So we'll try to provide some spaces. Um, you know, we want, to, we want to work with the community and get this thing built, and we don't want to take up any more parking than we have to. And I know it's going to be an issue. But right. And I did like Ed Malloy's suggestion that he mentioned at the city council meeting was that when the Civic Center is built and up and going, there will be a hundred plus uh, parking spaces on site here that will be used by community also. But when an event is going on and tickets or information are set out for the event, that with that, a map with the other parking lots designated, here is parking for the Civic Center events. And people are used to walking when they go to Hancher or wherever and um, so a block 
or two is not that bad to walk. We're just kind of spoiled, me, myself, and I included. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, we'd always, everybody wants to park right by the front door. Yes. And that's, that's not going to be the case, but like where we're standing right now will be the parking lot for the, the Civic Center when it's completed. And I, I don't know how many spaces there are in here. I would guess it's probably about 30 or 35 where we're standing. Right, right. I think there are 88 total here now, and there will be um, at least 100. Mm -hmm. So there will be more. And with the city working with us, um, we're going to do everything we can for um, businesses and community members for parking. But once again, Behind us, the demolition is going on, and they said this one house will be done today and another one. Um, and the one right directly behind us, the one that uh, had the asbestos on it, that's now completed. And they're going to take that down. The tree that's right directly behind us, and there's a garage here, and uh, one other garage. We're going to try to get all those done today. So we'll only leave uh, three properties, basically, to take out of here. And that's all just in one day. So it did take a long time to get to this point, but it's going to go quickly. And we want to thank our community for the support you've given us for this project, the Jefferson County Civic Center. Um, we want it to be all about community for you. We sure do. And we, like Susan said, uh, you, know, you can't say enough the support that we've gotten from the community. And we can always use more, right? Yes. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Susan.